All right, we're back this week with episode 13 of the Homestead Shop Talk podcast. We're here with uh, Al Alumna from Alumna Acres, Ben from Holler Homestead, and myself, Jason, from Sow the Land. And today's topic, uh, you know, I've been, uh, this week, for some reason, I've been talking with uh, Lorraine, my wife, and we're, we're talking about, like, growing old. Uh, do I, you know, as I was untangling my pig netting, I was like, Am, am I still going to do this when I'm like 70? <laughs> so today's topic is going to be growing, how to, I guess, how to prepare our homestead for growing old. Maybe not how to prepare, but like, are we preparing? What are our thoughts with that? And maybe how we can uh, continue doing what we're doing well into our later stages. Even though we have a long ways to go, guys. But <laughs> I hope but, so. Uh, A few more years. I feel like we're like, we're like halfway there. I'm halfway there, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, but first we're going to talk about our week. I can go first. It's kind of a short, short answer, I guess. So, uh, we, uh, we've yeah. kind of, we took the uh, week off last week for the most part. I think we only did one video and it's cause we were quite busy with things elsewhere. Um, last week we went and signed the paperwork on this one acre of land that's next door to us. Um, I think I talked about that in the last podcast uh, when we were recording. It was like, hey, I can talk about this because it'll be done by the time this episode goes up. So we uh, we did that that last week. Um, we uh, we have the boys in their driver's training and they were supposed to have done it last week, but there's a miscommunication. And so they're doing it this week and you know, that, that kind of throws a monkey wrench in our day-to-day -day schedule, having to take them to get all their behind the wheel stuff taken care of. But once it's done, it's done. We can get them their permits and start driving. Um, and then that's great. Pretty, yeah, pretty much. It's really weird. You know, talk about growing old. Like, how did I get here? <laughs> like, yeah, like, right. man, yeah. like, yeah. They're still like two years old or something, and here they are learning how to drive a car. Like it's just the weirdest feeling. Now I don't feel any older, but it is. Here we are. Right. It is so, so weird. It's it's yeah yeah. <laughs> so and then other than that, we're uh, continuing to tear out our summer garden and get our fall crops in. Um, like today. Uh, I spent a lot of time in the greenhouse, getting the greenhouse ready, um, just planting a whole bunch of, you know, cabbages and Brussels sprouts and broccoli and that kind of stuff. Uh, I think as of tonight, I am halfway done with the greenhouse. The other half is still in tomatoes and we're still harvesting tomatoes. So we'll just let that go probably until it gets too cold. So I'm, I'm happy with at least half the greenhouse planted out. Other than that, that's, that's pretty much my week so far. Your boy's going to go do a, a Lowe's run. <laughs> I need some material. Can you go get some? <laughs> I don't know yet, but that's one of those things. Like if they're going to stick around, like, guess what? I need some help today and I don't want to go to Lowe's. Yeah. Here's a list. <laughs> I know. Go put gas in the car. <laughs> I don't like putting gas. Yeah. It's all the that's things great, like man. that. Like thinking back, it's like, what did my parents do with me when I was learning how to drive? You know, there's the behind the wheel that you have to do. You have to log hours and stuff like that. And so we have to do that first. But uh, yeah, like right when I first got my license, my mom was like, here's 20 bucks. Go get a couple burgers. You know, here's here's this and that. Go pick, you know, whatever up. And it was just like, it was so cool. It was like, I can drive now. I'm like an adult. Yeah, I remember I was the first... Uh out of all my friends, I was a little, I was a little older than everybody. So I was the first one to drive at, at 16 and right away I got a job. I was delivering pizzas. You know, my mom basically let me use her car. It was a 89 Nissan Sentra stick shift. <laughs> and, uh, I ran that thing to the ground, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting my driver's license the day I turned 16. Had a job and always yeah. running the roads, it seemed like. Been working ever since. <laughs> right. Yep. Had to pay for the car and the gas. Yep. Yeah. 
So we didn't have DoorDash back in the day. <laughs> no. So I'll go. I'll go next. Um, I don't know. Kind of uneventful week for me. I think. I mean, we we uh, harvested a bunch of squashes, um, which I was hoping it was going to be more pumpkins than squashes, but they ended up being hardly any pumpkins. You know, the the infamous squash squash bug. You know, demolished a lot of it. Uh, even though we got a lot, but we planted a lot, so um, we hardly got any pumpkins. But Ben, the um, what is it, the Kushaw, Kushaw squash that you gave us, I think last Those year, do pretty good. We saved the seeds, and that that was the best, the best one out of all the ones we planted. We got most awesome. of them. So. So that those are good. So we're definitely going to continue saving those seeds. Um, this week I've been doing a uh, sponsored video, which is a, a security camera company sent me some cameras um, to do a video about them, and so that's been fun because you know I want to do a good video. Like I just don't want to just me just setting up cameras. You know, like I try to make it interesting somehow. So. Um, I'm currently doing that video. Yeah. And currently I'm in Washington, DC. Uh, we just got here about an hour ago and, um, we're just here just, uh, hit, hitting up the museums. So I'll, uh, next week I'll, maybe I'll share what happened because we haven't hit the museums yet. So we'll see how it goes out here. But so far it's been very crowded. Uh, or maybe I'm just not used to it. <laughs> You making a video while you guys are up there? Uh, I you know I have all my stuff. I brought my camera stuff. Um, I don't know. It's one of those things where, you know, it's another thing to to do. So I I, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to fill it out depending on how I feel. If I am, I'm not going to. I have my big camera, so I don't want to take that to the museum because we're going to be <laughs> we're going to be walking around everywhere, and you know, I don't want. I don't want to get patted down for taking a camera or something, <laughs> you know? So if anything, I'll, I'll film with my phone maybe, but I don't know. If anything, I'll, I'll do Instagram, some Instagram stories or something. So we've still been working on the workshop, trying to get the one we got to run, we got to get ready so we can get it wired up to run all of the solar, We're trying to get it a couple of the walls. We got to get insulated so we can put plywood on them. So that way we can get some wires up and then we can hang all of our solar components on that. So we've been working on that kind of monotonous wiring and insulation, not any fun, but it's one of those things that's got to get done. So that we're done with, which is good. Started, well, this weekend we went to a tractor show in Maine. So we're pretty rural that we started heading towards like the more populated spots of Maine. It's like, yep, we had fun while we were there, but we're like, Man, we're so glad we changed to the lifestyle we have. Mm. It's like, you, yeah. you appreciate it more. It's, it's nice to go out and do things like that. And then it's like, yep, I'm so happy we went on the route we went on and took the time and energy and effort to change our lifestyles. Because like you guys all know, it's not easy to kind mm. of jump ship and leave mainstream life behind. And but. I don't know it's right. fun doing stuff like that. So I'll be it'll be interesting to hear, Jason, when you get back from DC, like what's your new perspective of homesteading and <laughs> living out in the country? You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Well I'll probably be the same way. I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I'm glad we left. <laughs> right. I'm just like drive, driving home and like having like a grateful list just going through my head. I'm like, oh, this is a great yeah. perspective. <laughs> no, it's work. good. It's good to get away at like or go to a place like that, but at yeah. the same time, yeah, it's good to come home too. Right. <laughs> makes you appreciate home more we've been spending a lot of time this year looking for hay i don't know about you ben but our cow is i want to say she's fussy but i don't know if she's really fussy she's picky on the good hay so this yep. year we were able to get some really good first cut hay they had to cut the first cut hay like i don't know probably like six or eight inches high to get it before it was going to seed and we had a bunch of rain coming so I got some from a farmer and I mean, she would eat that stuff over anything. Like if you put, when we first got it, she was still grain fed a little bit, but if we put the grain out, she would choose that hay over grain and she would lick some up good every piece 
of hay. So I was like, I'm like, yeah, this cow like loves hay. Like we won here. Well, then we ran out of that hay and we had to get some other hay. And I think we went through like six or seven different other kinds of hay to try and she wouldn't touch it. So we finally found some more that she likes. So I'm like, okay, we need to buy the winter supply from this guy. Yep. Yeah, I've been there, done that. It, Our it cow makes a difference the same way. Right? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Did you notice it in the milk production? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, it, and the milk's down. That's even worse. Yeah, for us, it, I could always tell if a particular bale was, you know, like it, when you buy unsprayed hay around here, uh, it's going to have weeds in it. And some of those bales would yep. be great. Some wouldn't. And when I see her out there and she's just pulling it out and dropping it on the ground, it's like a toddler. Like she's just like picking through <laughs> her food. And she, right. in about two or three days, yeah. she'd completely waste, I would say probably 70% of a round bale. Uh, and she just, she just pick it out. You'd see her wow. chew one bite out of every, you know, five or six chomps she got out of there. And I was just like, this cow. And then some of those bales, you get them, they still smell really good. They're still green in the middle, like the real good bales. She wouldn't drop a blade of grass on the ground. She'd eat the whole thing. And yeah, milk production would go back up. We found an organic farmer. He's probably 45 minutes to an hour from us. So he's he's a ride, but he does a lot of organic hay. His regular square bale hay, she didn't care for, but he does um, alfalfa and timothy mix. Mm -hmm. But when he mm -hmm. bales that, he round bales it, but he does it like a silage. Well, this time of the year, you opened it, it would spoil and, you know, like maybe you might get a week out of it. But yep. I'm hoping to try some this winter when it's cold and see how she likes that. Have you ever tried Sorry. like a silage hay before? I have once. Uh, I, I don't know. I wasn't impressed. Um it uh we ended up yeah. using a lot of it for the pigs the pigs ended up eating it um but i think my biggest yeah. gripe is it's so heavy to move those those silage bales they are so heavy so i'm excited we got i think we should have enough hay coming tomorrow to get us through winter so we've kind of been That's searching good. and searching all summer but we finally found some how much hay are you getting for, for to last you we're going to get 200 bales. That should be more than enough. I think I'm thinking we should have some left over. So do you have a place to keep I'll that many? Here. A bale a day. We do. It'll, it'll be full, but we do. <laughs> Did you do mostly round bales then in the wintertime? If we had to get square bales, um, it, it was like dire straits because it was from the feed store and uh, our feed stores when you ask for organic or unsprayed hay they laugh at you so you know we 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 were able to source some unsprayed hay from you know friends and acquaintances because um, a lot of people out here cut their hay and there's a lot of people that if they see a field next door that the neighbor's not cutting they'll be like hey can i cut your hay and so there's once you start communicating with people you can you can get the hook up which that was what we did um right but yeah, we, we generally, everybody uses round balers, so that's all we can get. Uh, that was actually kind of one of the reasons I wanted a tractor was all we could buy was round bales, uh, and moving a round bale without a tractor is pretty much impossible. So we, uh, yeah, we made that happen. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, round bales are cool. Um, they last a lot longer, you know, once you get them in place, you can, you know, the way we did the cow, we'd put a hay bale in a spot, park the cow there. And then, you know, once the hay bale has gone, we'd move her to a different spot. It really greens up the poor areas of your, your pasture. How long would one round bale last for you guys for the cow and calf? Probably three to four days, maybe five days if there's some grass in that paddock, but usually, you know, over winter, there's no grass to speak of, so it's all hay. I, I'd i say a safe right. estimate was like four days. Uh, I don't know why she did it this way, but it always worked out to where she ran out of hay on the days that it was like torrential downpour. And I would have to be out there <laughs> on the tractor in my raincoat getting her another bale because she'd just sit and bellow and moo. Oh, she'd, she'd let you know. 
but it was always on the rainy days. It's like, <laughs> hey, there's rain in the forecast. She's got a whole bale right now. I bet you she's going to need hay, you know, <laughs> when that rain gets here. And that's how it always was. Now, do you think round bales are easier to deal with with a tractor than square bales? Speaking of getting old and <laughs> trying to make stuff that's, easier. With, that's would it. you think that's... round bales are easier with a tractor versus square bales? Well, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of elements that go into that uh, for that specific question. That would depend on your terrain. That would depend on your ability, your tractor, all that stuff. Um, our particular property is very sloped. Um, there's hardly any flat spots. Um, if I take a bale anywhere on this property, there's quite a lot of you know altitude change. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It, square bales are, I would say, always easier because I can throw a square bale in a wagon and, you know, like I can have any of the kids go feed the cow or whatever with a square bale. But the round bale, like, if you're driving up hills with a heavy load like that, you have to be careful. You know, you turn sideways on a hill with a load, you're going to tip. Uh, so, yeah, it, yep. I'd say just by default, square bales are easier to deal with but in the grand scheme of like hey i can park the cow with a round bale for you know the better part of a week eh, i mean that's that's pretty convenient so it just depends on <laughs> your system and what you're what you're wanting to do with with that let's go into today, today's topic are you are you guys currently doing any are you guys even thinking about when you get older what's gonna happen <laughs> like has that crossed you guys' mind? I'd say so. Yeah, it definitely has with me. Uh, kind of back to what we were talking about, the boys learn how to drive. Um, there's a very real possibility that here in the next couple of years, I'm going to lose two of my biggest helpers. Yeah, it's a weird thought. Like, you know, I can't expect them to hang out here the rest of their life. You know, it's just like my parents couldn't expect me to stay at home the rest of my life. Like, that's the goal. Like, you raise them and they move on and start their own lives. Well, with that, it's like planning for the future. It's like, can I do all of this by myself if I have to? Because eventually I'm going to be by myself. It'll be just me and Meg. And it's kind of a weird <laughs> thought to entertain. Like, it really is. Uh there's a lot of it that it's like probably won't be doing things the way we're doing. Uh, I know, you know, f just for example, we've talked about this before, raising as many meat birds as we do. Uh, if it's just the two of us, you know, it'll be, you know, uh, Buggy will be with us for quite a while because, you know, she's only three right now. So we've got another, <laughs> you know, however long. But say just the three of us, right. we're not going to need to raise 700 pounds of chicken and 800 pounds of pork and, you know, <laughs> a, a cow every year because we just, we're not going to eat through that. So I think as we get older and as we see, you know, kind of the need for everything we're doing on the scale we're doing diminish, I think that's when we can start really like kind of bringing it back tapering off a little bit. I, this is actually a great subject because there is a lot of stuff that we have talked about, me and Meg. Uh, it's like, hey, how do we do this? If, uh, say I break my leg, you know, God forbid <laughs> an accident happens. Like, yeah. can I hand this stuff off? Is this stuff set up in a way to where anybody can do it? And for the most part, a lot of it is. Um but yeah, it's it's definitely something, it's a conversation that needs to happen with everybody. I would say we're trying to think more systems to put in place, or you know, like I'd like to have like a rotationally grazing setup for the pigs so you can just open them up, you know, go from paddock to paddock. So I'd like to be able to do this. I want to be like that old guy that's like 80 years old, that's super flexible, and that can like still do a bunch of stuff. Like in my head, like that's <laughs> yeah. what I want to be. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Let's go. So my plan, I guess, should, should say that's what I where I want to be. So like I'm trying to eat healthier and like remineralize my body. So hopefully <laughs> I'll be that old guy. <laughs> right. I know. Is it so hard? Like I want to be the old 
<laughs> the old healthy guy. Maybe maybe I'm a little slower than 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 when right. I was forty. But, but for the, yeah, exactly. But for the most part, we could still move around. Like yeah. I could still pull a chicken tractor. <laughs> you know. I hope so, man. I hope we're all as that healthy. I hope we're all that healthy and we have like good systems in place and we can just, you know, be that old wise guy or wise man and just teaching people and showing people how to do it. You know, like sitting back on our rocking chairs, drinking sweet tea and <laughs> telling all the stories. <laughs> all right. So I actually have to like add this little bit. So Jason, like when your, your mini truck broke down, I actually kind of judged you a little bit. I was like, man, how did he like, like become so dependent on that? Like he was doing it just like I was. So I've had my golf cart back yeah. from the shop and I've been using that for chores every day. <laughs> yeah. I understand now. Like once, once this golf yes. cart breaks, man, it is so nice being able to load up every bucket I need in the back of this thing <laughs> and head off into the woods. Like this is like it is a game changer. It is so nice. Chores, I can get all the chores done plus animal moves in like twenty minutes. It's it's amazing. So I know. yeah, I understand now. Yeah. It's not <laughs> it's not such a chore anymore. Right. When once you have that. Yeah. Uh, it's actually kind of fun. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, yeah. That that's the way it's gonna be when I ever get a tractor. I'm gonna be that same way with the tractor. You know, your mini man. truck will be more versatile. You'll have jobs that you can do with the tractor, is what I find. We have the side by side, but the side by side mini truck is more fun than the tractor. You know what I mean? Like the tractor is oh, I see. Yeah. utilitarian. Like you have like your jobs you need to do with it. But if you want to take your tractor out every day, I guess what I found is you want to take your tractor out every day and do your chores. Like the tractor just tears everything up so much yep. more. That's mm. what I, that's been my experience. You get ruts and you get mud and it's just, it's yep. nasty. You track the mud to wherever you go. Yep. It's just, it's horrible. Having this golf cart, man, yeah, it's so light. It doesn't tear anything yeah. up. Like, mm -hmm. it's great. I know. Like, it's like once you have it, you just can't go back. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I'm, like, I'm going to have to always, whether it's this truck, mini truck, or a side-by-side -side or a golf cart, like, it's got to be something. Yeah. It's kind of like mm. eating a store bought chicken and then a pasture <laughs> chicken. Like you can't go back. Yeah. A, a <laughs> homegrown tomato or, a tomato or a store bought <laughs> tomato. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Walking or golf cart. You just can't go back. So I picture like a tractor would be something that we would need as we get older. Mm hmm. Well, including a, a mini truck or a, you know, right. side by side. Yeah. But I feel like a tractor is one of those things that is probably a must if we want to continue like moving wood chips, you know, uh, lifting heavy stuff, um, lumber or whatever. Um, but then I guess if we are already, if we can work now, like and set up our homesteads to by the time we are old then we have to do, hopefully we won't have to do as much of heavy lifting. You know, it's right. more like maintaining, I guess, maintaining yep. the land. Um, I guess that's the goal. I mean, that's probably why we're all working so hard right now is for, to be more future. efficient. So maybe we, yeah, exactly. For future, for we don't have to hopefully not do those things as we get older. There's a lot of stuff that I've oh. done around here that has been, you know, just good enough. And I'm looking at some of this stuff that just good enough isn't going to last. Um, there's, you know, like we've talked about it before. I need to finish this mobile home we live in. Uh, but something else that I've noticed, I'll just use this example. Meg's grandma came out and spent like a week and a half, two weeks out here with us last year she came out she stayed i don't know she was here she was she's got a cousin that lives uh, about an hour from here so she kind of split her month she was out here between us and her cousin well last year mind you her grandma is 86 years old 
Um, last year, her grandma helped us plant blueberries out in our orchard. She was like out there. She's she's a very strong woman. She's uh, she's just she's just one of those. She's not gonna be told to sit down. She's not gonna be told what to do. And so she's like, no, you're planting blueberries. I'm gonna come out there and plant with you. And she did. Well, this year, she slowed down a lot. You know, she's 86 now. She was 85 then. Um, and we've really seen her not decline, but she's slowed down. I don't think she went and did chores with me a single time. Whereas last year, every single morning she came with me and did chores. And, you know, all these hills out here are kind of treacherous if you walk slow. Um, and, you know, being her age, a fall on one of these hills could be a really bad thing. And so it it kind of opened my eyes this year that she didn't go do chores. And it was like, I've been thinking about putting in steps and stuff like that. Just things to make my life easier. Mm -hmm. Well, if I had done that, she would have been able yeah. to come around the property a little bit more. And so it's just stuff like that. It's like, okay, slips and falls, you know, you have to look ahead and prepare for stuff like that. And, you know, honestly, I have slipped and fallen on these hills, you know, when it's muddy, when it's frozen. And I'm like, I've had a couple of them feed buckets go everywhere and I'm sitting there on my butt getting mad. And I've had the thought, it's like, you know, I don't think I'll be falling down and getting up this fast in, you know, 30 years. You know, that's just, that's a fact. Some of these rocky muddy hills are pretty treacherous so yeah getting older there definitely has to be some stuff that changes yeah i was thinking um the raised garden beds like when i was building those those need to be taller they should be yep. taller yep so it, you know there's not so much bending over uh when you want to get it when you want to harvest or plant you know stuff like that like what you said ben you don't expect your your children to stick around uh like same with us i mean we have one you know we don't we don't i don't expect her to stick around i mean we would love for her to but you know we yeah. but we can't hold her here and if she doesn't want to you know um so you know it might end up being just me me and lorraine and am i going to be moving pigs in a or chickens in the netting every day or moving a chicken tractor i don't see me doing that when i'm older even if i could do it i don't know if i would want to when i'm older you know uh maybe a permanent paddocks would be better as you get older so you, like i think what you said al just opening up the door and letting them in or out i think it'd be nice to have like pastures set up for the pigs like rotate like with gates solid gates you can just kind of like kind of have like 10 of them in a row you know and just be able to push them through and that way you could kind of do that and i wonder if the system like that you could do with meat birds if it just still be chicken tractors or maybe like a robotic chicken tractor by then you never know <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Talking about <laughs> talking about homesteading. Yeah, assuming we all make it to you know our seventies and eighties, right? Right. Assuming. I know, man. I know. I just want to be a girl. I'll uh, be an old man. Be a healthy old man. That's it. Yeah. But it's almost like you have to prepare for the for the like. It's like winter. Preparing for the worst. Hope for the best. You know, uh, I guess that can maybe be the same with getting old and maybe work hard now to prepare. Yeah. Am I, am I going to be butchering a, a cow when I'm older? Probably not. You got a tractor. Why not? Right. Do a lot of maybe, heavy for you. Maybe. Ooh, See, I'd be old pros by then. I think I'll still be doing this stuff. Uh, I, I will always be growing my own meat, my own food, uh, as long as I am able. Oh, yeah. Um, 
and butchering animals. Like I really do truly enjoy, uh, you know, processing meat and, you know, preserving meat and all that stuff. Like I really do enjoy that. So it'll probably just have to become, you know, less, like I won't need as much. Um, but like, I'm still going to do it. Like one of the funnest things in the world is like when you get into winter, fall and winter, and it's like time to process a pig, like that's just like, it's a good time. So I don't, I don't see me stopping doing yeah. that unless I, you know, I can't, but yeah, it's, it's like, we're, wow. we're living this way of life for a reason. Like we, we do actually enjoy this way of life. Yeah. I think it'd be cool if we're, like you said, like we're, I still want to do it, but if we're, if it'd be nice, if, if we're doing it and there's younger people looking to find it, like right now we would love to go find, I'd love to go find a 70 year old dude that, you know, butchers yeah. pigs and smokes them and go hang out with him for a pig processing or, a, you know, and just get and, that uh, knowledge. So if we could do that and we're that age, that would be awesome. Yeah. Don, that'll, happen. That that'll happen. <laughs> right be showing off like all of our you know all have like root cellars and stuff and old cold smoke houses and everybody's gonna be asking us how you guys do like oh come on over we'll show you yeah <laughs> i'd like to have like a good winter growing season figured out by the time i'm older like have a nice greenhouse and figure it out like have it dialed in for winter greens and have like a nice place to go to in the winter time so if we want to start a good winter growing season we almost have to start in the summer or this time not even this time of the year we'd have to already have started in yeah probably end of july august to get everything up and going because we start losing our daylight and everything sooner have you ever seen that and guy in like a radiant have you ever seen the guy in nebraska that grows citrus so Yep. He has, what is it, like a half dug in greenhouse with yeah, like geothermal cool. heat, kind of? Yeah. Yep. Is that a Walpini that he has? Yep. yep. That's what that's what we want to build out here. That'd be really cool. Grow some, you know, semi-tropical stuff in North Carolina. That'd be pretty cool. I bet you, right. I bet you, you guys could probably look into that. I bet you, you could figure something out and grow some you know, at least extend your season by doing something like that. Right. We have a lot of southern facing areas, so we're lucky there. Not like it's not like we're north facing. So we do have that in our favor. We just gotta figure it out and dial it in. We're still young. We got plenty of time. <laughs> what what about uh doing YouTube when you're like seventy? <laughs> right. <laughs> hey by that time we're just gonna have there. like virtual reality <laughs> <laughs> we know some people in their 70s that are doing youtube like they're out there oh yeah yeah for oh, sure yeah. by that time geez who knows what's good what, what's gonna be around by that time Can you imagine <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting to see if we're still doing it in our 70s like how our content has changed and like what we'll be making <laughs> videos on are we, is it going to be like all how to kind of stuff or you know or what what it'll be with the way I society's going it's going to be this is a chicken this is a pig we're just going to be redoing our content right <laughs> for the for the next generation right like they're, they're not watching our old videos no. <laughs> you know We'll be outlaws, though. If society keeps going the way they're going, you won't be able to grow your own food. We'll be like outlawed and banned, probably. Yep. Yeah. There's. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's what I see happening. We'll just be teaching like actual in-person workshops. You'd have to. Yep. <laughs> Living off the land and. Yeah. So I guess the other thing too is I wonder what direction everything goes. But if if everybody gets healthier and you know the whole regenerative farming thing gets going and stays on track like what kind of food you'll be able to buy at a store because i don't that would also make it different too like if you could actually go instead of driving down the street and having a mcdonald's if you had a place where you could go buy a good quality you know grass-fed burger and a good quality a2 a2 raw milk milkshake you know what i mean like that would kind of change a lot of the stuff you're always having to do too like if you were if you could go to the grocery store and buy that 
and know it was good quality or say go to the farmer's market and have it like readily available, we wouldn't probably have to grow as much. That'd be cool. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't see, uh, let's see here. I'm going to have to put on my tinfoil hat. I don't know if I should do that. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of, uh, laws getting ready to come down, come down the pike. Um, they want regulation of food. They want regulation of absolutely everything. You know, there's already places in America where, like, look at Oregon. They passed laws making it illegal to artificially inseminate your animals. So, I mean, this stuff is already coming. They're going to nickel and dime everybody to death and outlaw stuff bit by bit until it's so hard to live this life, nobody can do it. And that's where they're going to try to get everybody with the fake meats and the GMO everything. Like, that's the direction they want it to go. Uh, the direction I I see all of us headed is, like you were saying, like the the food movement. The food movement is incredible how it has progressed just in the past, uh, not even 10 years, uh, where, you know, you can right. find raw milk here and there you can find like high quality organic food at your grocery store whereas you know 10 15 years ago organic what the heck is that hippie so yeah it's <laughs> right it, it, you've got this culture counterculture thing happening right now and i think we're kind of part of it you know who would ever thought that it's counterculture to want to grow your own food well, right now, Whole Foods, you know, it's all natural food and stuff like that that they sell their grocery store. Well, now they're selling bioengineered corn, corn yep. on the cob. You know, it's like yep. really Whole Foods mm -hmm. is going down that. Now. You know, yeah, weren't they like, all weren't they all about not doing that? Yep. yep. Well, now they're owned by doing... Amazon. Mm. Yeah. So Amazon owns them now. So things are going to change. I'm sure. It's just kind of like most of your natural or herbal companies, they've all been bought out by like Procter and Gamble, Johnson and Johnson, and Craft. I worked at a health food yep. store five or six years ago. Like it was crazy how many of these herb companies have been bought out by all these big conglomerates. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of scary, but and the average person doesn't realize it. Like Burt's Bees, I think is owned by Clorox now. Yep. Yeah, did you see that documentary with him? No, nope. there's a Burt's Bees documentary that was uh, maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago or something where it talks about that, like how he, this guy started it and how he basically didn't get a whole lot for it when he oh, sold he it. No, like he had a partner and like, I don't know, I haven't seen it in a while, but something like that, something went bad and he didn't really get as much as he probably should have. Right. <laughs> I'll have to look that up. I'm not sure what it's called. I don't know if it's called Burt's Bees or what, but it's a it's a documentary. It's pretty it was pretty good. I remember seeing it. But I feel like we're still in the beginning. I feel like I don't know I even though we've kind of been in this space for seems like a while, but uh, I feel like it's still like the very beginning stages of of doing whether it's homesteading or growing food like like the way we are. I think more and more people are still just waking up to it. Like we've been doing it for a while and I think yeah. I've been aware, but the majority of people still have no clue. Don't even think about their food. I think especially like where, you know, think about it, like we're out in the country and we've all decided to slow down, but you live in the rat race and you're running constantly. You don't have time to think about your food other than you're hungry. You need to shove something down your throat. I think it's about of creating or coming up with like systems. Like you said, like, if we can really dial in our systems that we all have and by the time we're older or something happens, we get sick or whatever, break a leg, you know, like my wife can still do it. A child can do it would be good. Yep. Or even somebody that never done any of this farming stuff in their life can come on the property and figure it out. You know, like, can do it, you know, like, like that easy. That would be the goal. 
have to have like communes again and keep all the families close to each other. You buy up all the property around me. Right. <laughs> or just build little cabins and you can have, you can do like farm rentals and have experiences and teach people how to do this stuff. And you can just, you know, you can be teaching them how to do all this stuff and you just have them doing the chores every morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. Right. Today we're going to move chicken tractors. Tomorrow we have to move the pigs to pasture. Yeah. And then the next day we're going to move pigs again. <laughs> right. And we're going to, <laughs> we're going to move a chicken tractor again. <laughs> oh, you want to come this week? This week is chicken butchering day. This is the <laughs> expensive week. You want money for it. <laughs> Tomorrow we we're gotta, feeding chickens. <laughs> right. We got to learn our mark. We got to get better marketing skills. Oh man. There's this crazy old guy. All I'm doing over there is feeding his chickens. <laughs> and I'm paying them to do it. <laughs> oh, man. oh, man. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> we just got to think out of the box. I think that one of the big things from like us right now, we're building the workshop. And building the workshop is, you know, so when we're older, we have a place to do stuff. If we need to tinker, we can. But also, like, our winters are long. So it's like, it's nice for us right now, to ha nice to have a place to get out and be able to go work on stuff. So it's kind of, to me, even that is kind of like long-term thinking, like to be able to have a place to go tinker and yeah, and stuff like that. I like something too that doesn't get talked about very often is like the uh, latter part of your life, your financial situation. Um, a lot of people overlook that uh, in, you know, our age, our age bracket now, you know, if you put it off and you don't think about, can you even afford your place later? Are you going to lose it? Or are you going to keep it? Um, we, uh, we have had the mortgage that was, you know, a big nut to crack compared to our income. You know, we've, we've been there just like every other American. And when we came here and we were able to buy this place, like, <sighs> I don't know how to say it without sounding like I'm putting myself down. Like we live in a mobile home and we're only on six acres, seven now, but we are okay with a like smaller life. Uh, if it means we don't have to go out and, you know, earn that money to crack that nut every month. Uh, I don't know. That was just a thought that popped into my head. No, totally. The other, no, the other sure. scary thing to think about is with all that is taxes too, because those don't yep. go away. Nope. You know, property tax and everything every year that goes up. It seems like and can't you can never get that to go back down, right? At least I haven't found a way yet. Do we have retirement? You know, working for myself, do I have retirement? <laughs> I think about that stuff sometimes, but it's kind of like, do you invest it in? I don't know. I guess. Seeing the way the food system and the world's going, do you invest your money and try to invest in regular stock market stuff? Or do you want to invest in your homestead and kind of build something that's real and hopefully in the future you can have a farm to grow food for yourself? Yeah, and that's your, your other food 401k. Yeah. Right. But is there a way to make right. that into a retirement 401k? You know, like a real, like not just for your, for your food, but is there a way to, that's where I'm thinking, I guess right now is like, how can we make that a retirement plan? Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't care to invest in the stock market. I'd rather invest in ourselves and the future. Cause I don't know if we let the world go and the food go the way it is. I don't want to be eating that. I don't want my kids to be eating that. I, it's not healthy for you. So I don't know. That's some of the stuff I think about. I mean, you could probably, uh, Maybe if you have the space, rent a rent a space, rent it, rent a piece of land, you know, from some to somebody, and you could create income that way. Or if you throw a throw a little tiny home on it and rent that out, or like you said, do farm experiences, stuff like that. That could be retirement. Um, I think that's honestly that's where we're headed. Me and my me and Lorraine, uh, you know, we're starting to think about like building a tiny home here yep. and seeing if we could somehow rent that or create these experiences 
and just to see how that works. And if we could start that now and see, kind of see where that goes. Yeah, so the other thing I think about too is how do you create, or how do you, I don't know if it's create change or how do you get involved so you can create change? The world's not going the way it's going. Is there a way to do that? I think we just got to continue doing what we're doing. Right. Yeah. It, be the change. You know, we, we can't really right. change people or change the world, but we can change us and all of us, all three of us have. We are doing something completely different. We are the change that we want. And, you know, I would say that everybody listening, all the people who watch our videos, like those people are also in that same same bracket of people who are the change. People who are sick of the uh, they're at least thinking the about way it. things have been. Yeah. Yep. And I'd say don't give up if you're if you're there and you're not where you want to be yet, because I don't think any of us are where we really I mean, we're on a, we're on the course where we want to be, but we also see like bigger things we want to do. So it's definitely a progression. Yeah. And try to stay healthy. Right. Yep. <laughs> that is true. You know, I'm not older yet. So like I, it's hard, I think it's still hard to, to think that far in advance of like what, what exactly we were going to need as we get older on our land. And who's to say we're going to, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to stay on this piece of land forever. You know, I mean, I think it, It'd be nice, and I, I kind of treat it as I am. It's just hard to see what the future holds, but I think <laughs> the best the best thing we could do is just just keep moving forward, and uh, we'll figure it out. Yeah, people watching on uh, YouTube, if you could com uh, shoot us a comment down below, and uh, you know, if you're older or or not, you know, and uh, you have a homestead, uh, what, what kind of things that you do to help you homestead? to continue homestead as you, as you get older, because like it or not, we're all going to be in that same spot. It's coming. And we're, we're going to look at this very specific video, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when we're 70 and we will be like, man, we were totally off, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yep. like what were we thinking? You know, but anyways, I appreciate everyone. Uh, watching these videos on our YouTube channel and also listening to us on these podcasts. Thank you so much. If you have not, uh, leave it a review on iTunes. Um, that would help the podcast uh, get to more people so more people could see it. And uh, you can also share these podcasts We're on YouTube, other uh, podcast apps. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys next week. Good week, guys. See you guys later. <laughs>